Storm is a violent, fast-paced first-person shooter developed by Epic Games and People Can Fly, the team behind the awesome Painkiller franchise. It was released in 2011 for Microsoft Windows, PlayStation 3, and the Xbox 360. It's an incredibly over-the-top experience with some of the most satisfying gunplay that the FPS genre has to offer. In Bulletstorm, you take on the role of Grayson Hunt, voiced by the legendary Steve Bloom, whose voice alone has the power to spontaneously impregnate women. Christmas come early, boys! Grayson is a former member of the Dead Echo Squad, a black ops team working for the evil General Serrano, carrying out political assassinations under the guise that they're killing actual criminals. During a routine mission, they discover they're being used to kill innocent people, and shortly after this, Serrano betrays them and leaves them all for dead. I'm gonna kill you! Hey man, what the fuck? After this, the squad goes rogue where they seem to do little more than just get drunk all the time and kill the odd bounty hunter. In the game's opening after killing an aforementioned bounty hunter, they happen to run into Serrano's spaceship known as the Ulysses, and a drunken Grayson decides it's a good idea to attack them head on with their own pint-sized spaceship. They do manage to cripple Serrano's ship, but in the process they crash land on the planet Stygia, and most of Grayson's crew is killed soon after with his best friend Ishii mortally wounded. Brought back to life through cybernetic implants that have him fighting to gain control of his mind over a murderous AI system. I am having a difficult time seeing how you can help me. Now, the planet they've landed on was originally a large resort destination for tourists that soon got overrun by the tens of thousands of convicts that were held beneath the planet's surface. Then things went even further to shit due to the radiation and other deadly flora and fauna that the planet contained. Now it's basically a war zone where mutants and bandits all fight for dominance and this is the battleground the player has to traverse. <laughs> Initially Grayson and Ishii are just trying to reach the location of one of Serrano's troops in the hopes they can escape the planet on the dropship that's going to be sent in as a rescue. Turns out this trooper is a woman named Trishka, someone with a link to Grayson's past and also involved in the reasons behind Serrano's betrayal. Wow. Nicely done. Yeah. What ensues is an uneasy truce as the three agree to work together to escape the planet, eventually encountering Serrano for the game's finale. Now this is surprisingly well written and dark stuff with a really intense prologue where you watch how Grayson basically ruins the lives of several hundred people within the first five minutes of the game. What polarizes with this generally well laid out plot is how characters often make really immature dick jokes or childish remarks, the type of insults you'd expect to hear from a 14 year old kid. I named him Waggleton P. Tallylicker. Yeah? Go fuck yourself! You shit clouds give chase, I will kill your dicks! But that's mostly keeping in tune with the game's comic book like feel. I mean, this is a game with some ludicrous action. One of the earliest levels in the game has you on a train car being chased by a giant grinding wheel. A few chapters later, you're given the controls of a large mechanical dinosaur which tears everything to pieces with its powerful machine gun. You'll fight a giant mutant plant in an epic boss battle, control a mounted minigun on the back of a chopper, decimating bandits on nearby rooftops, and dodge lightning anomalies as you move through a ruined building during an energy storm. This truly is an incredible looking game at times with some gorgeous particle effects and environments. Bulletstorm runs on the Unreal 3 engine, and I can't speak for the console versions, but on the PC, this is just a great looking game with incredibly large environments and just like I said, insane set pieces. But the real centerpiece here is the combat system. Oh, I can do this all day. Grayson has an anti-gravity boot that you can use to kick enemies off nearby ledges or into environmental hazards. And you can also slide along the ground, which launches enemies into the air in a similar fashion. Early on in the game, you get your hands on an instinct leash, which is an energy whip of sorts that can be used to grab enemies and pull them towards you for an easy kill, but it also gives you access to something called the skill shot system. Now, the skill shot system is a passive grading program that is constantly assessing how you perform in combat. The more creatively you kill an enemy, the more points you're given, which you can then spend to stock up on ammo or weapon upgrades when you reach a nearby drop kit. So obviously you want to kill enemies as lavishly as possible, so you've got enough points to stay well equipped. Killing an enemy the standard way by, you know, just shooting them until they're dead will give you a measly 10 points, but killing them with a headshot, for instance, will net you 25 points. The amount of skill shots in the game is extensive, and some of them are genuinely tough to pull off, but most of them you'll do unintentionally during combat. There are dozens and dozens of these skill shots, and they all give you varying amounts of points depending on how hard or easy they are to pull off. All of the different weapons also have their own skill shots attached to them. You've got your standard machine gun, a revolver, a shotgun, a couple of grenade launchers, a spear gun, and a sniper rifle. 
and all of the associated skill shots are actually more varied than you'd think. The spear gun is probably my favorite, not only because it can kill enemies in a single hit, but also because the projectile has a tendency to ricochet around and take out anyone else unlucky enough to be standing around. If you line up a bunch of bad guys and fire, you can also impale multiple enemies, earning you the shish kebab skill shot. And this skill shot thing is really more than a gimmick because the entire game is centered around this mechanic and it's really satisfying when you're able to pull off a series of impressive shots with score multipliers popping up all over the screen. Most of the weapons are great fun to use, all offering up alternate fire modes, though some of them are a bit gimmicky and not all that useful in certain situations. The sniper rifle is a good example of this, letting you steer the bullet in slow motion as you're firing at enemies, which is neat, but there's only a couple of instances in the entire campaign where you have to use it to progress, and you're better off keeping more useful weapons equipped in the meantime. You're given a three weapon limit, which kinda sucks, meaning you have to frequently switch weapons in and out at drop kits throughout each level. The only real issue I can find with the skill shot system is that it's not entirely consistent. I mean, most of the time the environments allow you to kill enemies lavishly and as creatively as you'd like, but some of them just feature little to no interaction with the destructive elements, forcing you to kill enemies much more routinely. There are rare occasions when you're trying to pull off a skill shot and you just can't get it to work. You know, maybe there's a hit detection problem and one of your planned attacks doesn't pull off. I mean, I'd say this happens about 20% of the time in the overall campaign, which isn't bad, but it's just kind of frustrating when you know how fun the combat can be. Another thing is that when you're in combat with a dozen guys and you're running around kicking people into power lines or into piranha filled lakes, or just thinking of a wacky way to kill your next enemy, you're constantly being shot at by the other 11 people you are not focusing on. Every enemy in this game is a hit scan enemy, and like I said, while you're dealing with bad guy number one, the other 11 aren't standing around waiting for their turn. What this means is that in larger scale battles, you'll most often have to kill enemies in a boring and routine way because the damage you take is just relentless. <laughs> On that note, playing Bulletstorm on the high difficulties kind of removes that experimentation element as well because you take damage so quickly, you can't really afford to dick around that much in the combat. For some reason too, there's no jump button in this game, and when you come to small ledges, you have to press a context-sensitive button to vault over it, which is just annoying. Bulletstorm also has something of a weak ending. The final boss fight is a quick time event, which is a total letdown, and the ending was written to allow a sequel, which ultimately got cancelled, leaving the storyline unresolved. But when everything in this game clicks, there's really nothing else quite like it, and the only other shooting game I can think of that comes this close to being over the top is older shooting games like Blood and Shadow Warrior, but even those can't really match the type of carnage you can cause in Bulletstorm. Let's give him a warm welcome. I don't think Bulletstorm is really a must-play title, but it is very entertaining throughout its four or five hour duration. But I can't think of any other game that lets you kill someone by kicking them into a Venus flytrap, so it might just be worth checking out for that alone.